Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you step by step exactly how to paint this landscape. We're going to be working on a 16 by 20 canvas that I primed with uh, two coats of black paint. I let it dry. I've now got my number 50 filbert brush. You can use any large blending brush you want to just get coverage for your background. I'm taking some titanium white. I've got a little bit of water on my brush and I've also got some lemon yellow. I'm just going to mix the two and blend them across the background. And then I'm going to switch over to a little bit of my neon orange for some sun rays. And I've also got some green gold on my palette and some Kelly green. I'm lining my brush up in the corner. I'm just going to pull and flick diagonal lines just on an angle like that for my sun rays. So I'm going to take without washing my brush off some of that beautiful green gold I want all those colors to blend together and kind of join up into the the sky where the horizon is and look how pretty that is with a little bit of that white and yellow a little bit of that neon orange in there so this makes for a really beautiful golden green golden background so I'm just going to work on this a little bit blending in just scumbling around and then I'm going to add a little bit here on the top right corner as well Now again, without washing my brush off, I'm going to take both of these greens, mix them together, and start making the foreground. So I'm going to just pull my brush right underneath the lighter green gold and kind of slide and scumble my brush around in a patchy sort of way so that I get multi-tones uh, and tonal effect of all the greens, lights and shadows, uh, highlights and shadows uh, hitting in the foreground on that grass. Now I'm purposely leaving a little area there where you see we're going to have our path. It's all black now, but I'm going to come in without washing my brush off again. White and the rest of my uh, lemon yellow there. I was going to say neon yellow. Now if you have neon yellow, that would work as well. I happen to be all out of my neon yellow uh, right now. So lemon yellow is another great option. It's really nice and bright. I don't want to over blend the path too much because what happens is you end up just pushing that paint around and it kind of starts to come off and I'm going to be left with that black canvas showing. So I want to be really generous with my paint. And at this point, I want it to feel uh, impressionistic and sort of patchy like this. I'm going to add a few highlights here on the left as well. Again, kind of hopping around with my brush, lifting it up, tapping quickly to make it look more natural, just for a few little highlights here and there. And you know, the filbert brush works really great for this because you can get that foliage look just by using the tip of your brush. And now here with the remainder of the paint on my brush, I'm gonna just do a layer in front of those other bushes that are way off in the distance that are that beautiful soft green gold. Okay, so now switching over to a flat brush. I got it a little bit wet first, and I'm going to get those colors again, those same colors, uh, white with my neon orange, and I'm going to do another layer of my sun rays. So we have different tones uh, for our sun rays, and this will just give us a little bit more depth. I'm going to bring some of these down a little bit lower. Now where the end of those uh, sun rays are hitting and falling, I'm going to tap in really lightly here, just with the tip of my brush. Uh, for little patches on the grass and on some little bushes to make it look like they're being all lit up from some of those sun rays. And then I'm going to soften them with one of my uh, mop brushes. And I've got an oval mop that I'm going to be using. Keep in mind when you want to soften something and kind of dry brush it and make it look uh, sort of transparent and cloudy, make sure that your brush doesn't have any water in it. It's okay to go in for paint, but I would stay away from using water if you want to keep that fluffy shape that the mop brush has. It's very nice and soft and makes perfect little bushes. So after applying a little bit more, I scumble around and dry brush. And now I'm gonna go in and add some uh, darker bushes and foliage, work on my tree on the right side. 
and I want this to be uh, sort of a sap green, so I can make it here by taking my neon orange, my Kelly green, and my black. I'm gonna start coming in and tapping a whole bunch of bushes here off to the right side and give them a little bit of movement and flow. They kind of look, uh, I wouldn't really say swirly, but they have a little bit of a scoop to them and then they kind of go up on the ends. And this is really just me having fun with the brush itself. And I like to create flow in my paintings and um, kind of lean towards the whimsy, whimsical side uh, with my landscapes. So I'm gonna keep applying this and this is gonna ultimately turn into a big tree that will come in later on with a dark tree trunk and um, a whole bunch of branches. Okay, so to build up some more layers here with the remainder of the paint in my brush, I'm gonna take a little bit of leftover neon orange, which is hardly any, and a little bit of white and just create a softer shade, like maybe three to four shades lighter than what's over there on the right. And apply this on the left, tap and sort of scumble around softly. And now I'm gonna come over and add a little bit of that same color to some of these branches. I'm now turning my brush to the side, like you see here, and just pulling, tapping, and dragging, and flicking to make it look like some moss hanging. After adding a little bit more foliage and building up those layers, I'm gonna take my round brush, a little bit of water to help that paint flow, and black paint. So I'm just gonna come in here and twist my brush around, rolling it between my fingers. So have a look where my fingers are holding the brush and you'll see how I'm working it. And this is how you get a really natural uh, looking tree trunk that has a lot of character to it that is really old and has all those crooked little branches. Um, so it's really easy, just travel with your brush, pulling lightly while you're twisting and rolling and letting off um, on the tip where you want those branches to be a little bit thinner. So on the end of each branch is where they're gonna be the smallest and thinnest, of course. And the tree trunk itself is gonna be thicker, so I uh, push a little bit harder to make it look fuller and thicker. So after adding a few more branches, I'm going to pull out towards the path, work my way towards the path gently and ease off on the pressure in the tip of my brush just for the base of the tree and those little roots. I'm now going to start working on my big hydrangea planter. I've got a few brushes I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using a filbert, a flat, and a round, possibly a liner. It depends on how much detail that you want to have on your planter. And mine's going to be really... Uh, more impressionistic looking so you're not going to see all of the designs and patterns really in detail or in full focus. Uh, it's going to be a little bit on the messy side like I normally do because it, it really is about the whole picture coming together and not putting too much um, emphasis on any one thing in a painting. I want the whole painting to work well together so I'm just gonna start creating little shapes here, okay? So think of ovals, lines, squares, and making light gray with just my titanium white and my black. And then I'm gonna add straight white for highlights. I'm gonna create my own little pattern here, and I want you guys to feel free to follow along exactly step-by-step step with my pattern or um, create your own. And you can also look at some reference photos if you're not sure, but. I definitely uh, encourage you guys to get out of your comfort zones with this and not let this part of the painting scare you at all. This is actually really, really fun to do. And you can just see where I'm using a, a round brush and a filbert brush. You can push and pull to create those little loops and lines and designs on your planter. Of course, where you want to have some shadows, you'll use a little bit more of the black. And I want you guys to also keep in mind that the planter is going to be full of foliage, ivy, leaves, and flowers. So 
that's going to help to camouflage any little imperfections or things about your planter that may be bothering you and you feel like you want to keep fixing. You can just camouflage those things or distract from them by adding some vines or a leaf over. It's really, really simple and easy to do this, guys. And I'm so excited to see your versions of this up on the Facebook group. By the way, you guys are blowing me away with your talent on there. I can't believe how... Uh, amazing and beautiful all your paintings are so I just wanted to quickly throw that in here right now I see everything you guys post of course I do because it has to be run by me first of all so I'm seeing everything you guys post I'm reading all your kind supportive comments on there you guys are all really encouraging and it's a wonderful group so I want you guys to know that I am seeing everything I'm commenting as much as I can but it's hard to keep up all of uh, my my groups and my social media and find time to paint all these tutorials for you too but I want to thank you guys for all your support there and keep up the good work I want to add to the design here. I want it to look really 3D. So I'm using a lot of paint and I'm just going to just tap really lightly to add, tap that paint on there and leave it. So I don't want to blend it in. I want you to be able to feel uh, the bumps from that paint once the paint is all dry. And this is just sort of like an ornate design of uh, maybe there's like apples or oranges or peaches maybe there's some flowers in there um, but we can't really see everything because uh, we're not close up enough to it but that's kind of what it is and it's like little garlands of it kind of wrapping around the planter um, and I'm just using straight white for that and then I can come in a little bit later on and I do just with a little hint here and there of black to make that pop out even more Okay, now for the fun part, I love using my mop brush to create foliage. So I've got another makeup mop brush here and I'm gonna just tap in some black and that Kelly green. Maybe I've got a little bit of uh, that green gold in there too. And I'm gonna start just tapping in, making a really big uh, poofy shape here. And it's lopsided, it's not perfect. It's just spilling over the edges with ivy and those big hydrangea leaves. And this is where you can, you know, start to camouflage any little imperfections and hide those by tapping in a little bit of foliage here and there. And as well as the base of the planter itself, I wasn't quite sure if I wanted to show the bottom of the planter or if I wanted to have it set in amongst some flowers and grass. Uh, so you can definitely cover the bottom up and camouflage that 
with some grass and flowers and stuff. Okay, so after I add a few more details here, just with my white, I'm gonna pull and drag down some vines for the ivy. So little wiggly, messy looking lines on the left and the right side of the pot. And you want them to be different lengths so they're not all the same. That'll just help to make it look more natural. And then I'll be tapping in here and there for the suggestion of little leaves on there. Again, nothing too detailed, just some light and darks, a uh, mixture of white, black, and green, and change it up. Some of them will have more white, some of them will have less, some of them will have more black, and some of them will have a little bit more green. So keep it uh, random and always a little bit different. So you um, stay away from everything looking too uniform and too... Uh, perfect looking, I guess you could say. And I just find for the size of the leaves that I want to create right now, this round brush is working perfectly for me. Um, you could use a really small filbert brush as well. And you can see I'm not taking much time with them at all because this is not close enough that we're going to see um, the exact shape uh, and detail of each of these leaves. So you just want to keep it um, really loose and impressionistic looking. And then we've got those leaves that are, they're going in all different directions, right? They're facing all different directions. Some of them are facing us, some of them are off to the side. And so we're just going to see sort of a skinny line because they're flat to the side, if that makes sense. So picture what leaves look like from all angles. And if you're not sure and you can't picture that, then kind of just look at images or go outside in your front yard and have a look and you'll see uh, that it's just lines and shapes and it kind of just breaks, breaks down like that. And um, it's kind of uh, the best way to look at things that maybe intimidate you when you're learning to paint something new, break it down into shapes and light and shadow. So some of these are going to be a little bit brighter and we're just going to layer up here We've got those deep dark green ones and then a little bit lighter and then i'm adding more white with just a little bit of my lemon yellow as well As I finish up here, I'm going to wash my brush off and hop over to my little mini tiny mop brush. I've got a few colors here, light ultramarine blue, neon rose, phthalo blue, and um, cobalt blue. So I'm going to use all of these colors with some white to create my hydrangeas. Now I want it to look like 
maybe there's some more, there's some bushes way off in the distance. So I'm just going to lightly tap and then kind of make them look soft and, and blurry. I just want to have a hint and a suggestion that they're back there. And then I'll kind of just going to go in between some of these uh, branches on the tree and scumble around this color for a nice balance and a little bit of shadow. So I'm going to change up uh, the colors for my hydrangeas quite often. Some of them are going to have more of the rose or the pinky tone to them and some of them are going to have more phthalo, some of them will have more of the cobalt, um, and some will have a little bit more white. So again, try to keep it random. Don't place everything perfectly. Um, have some of them smaller, have some of them bigger and really just have fun with these colors. They're some of my favorite colors to work with and I absolutely love hydrangeas. I've been painting quite a bit of them lately as well as wisteria. Um, I think I just am really drawn to purple and blue flowers but here you, you can see I've got my uh, neon or luminous rose. These are colors by Holbein. The, the neons that I use are by Holbein and I'm going to apply the, that color more off to the left side and no specific reason I just decided to do that um, and then add some lighter ones here on the top and I even want to include a little bit of light green inside some of the ones that haven't fully bloomed yet to make it look even more realistic and I'm going to add a little bit of that uh, towards the end of the video. Now you can see I'm back to my little round brush so I can do a few little dots and dabs uh, with more highlights and shadows and color and then I'm going to wash my brush off and come in between where the foliage is and uh, just bring that um, a little bit darker so uh, maybe another shade or two darker I'm going to add a little bit of phthalo blue in with my black and my green and just do it really uh, like not really pulling around with my brush but more of tapping and dabbing um, so yeah, I'm going to be hopping back from this little round brush and my little mini mop brush to create all these flowers here. Well, as the paint has had some time to dry in my planter, I've come in and outlined and defined a little bit more light shadow, or highlights and shadows, and then I just decided why not add a few little wild looking 
impressionistic flowers here. I started off with um, some very loose looking irises. Another one of my favorite flowers. Again, I just love purple and blue. So I'm just going to do these really loosely and simply. You guys definitely can do this. In fact, you can paint any flower that you want. I'm going to add a few little suggestions of tulips as well. Maybe some lupin or delphinium off to the left and a few other pretty little pink, simple looking flowers like little daisies. Now I just want to add a shadow and more contrast in between some of these flowers. So I'm taking a phthalo blue, maybe a little bit of black on the tip of my brush and just using the very tip here of my little round brush. Uh, it can act like um, a liner brush if you have one that's small enough like this. And then I'm going to move on to some more flowers. So like I mentioned earlier, some little lupins I think I'm going to do here. So I'm just taking um, any of my blues or all of them with a bit of white. So I'm scooping up both colors and I'm not blending them on my palette. I want to add highlight and color and shadow at the same time. So it's kind of like a one stroke um, painting technique. And then I'm going to come in with a clean brush, my neon red, and some titanium white and make a bright, bright, pretty um, Gerber daisies, maybe I'm thinking, right down here. So just, again, really loosely tapping, pulling for all those little messy looking petals. And I think this color is really pretty with all the green, of course, red and pink and green, they're complementary. So I'm going to do a few more down here. And I'm thinking at this point, I wasn't sure um, what else I wanted to do. I could have left it like this and you can too, but I really felt like I wanted to add a fence um, in this painting along that, down that little lane. And then a little bluebird right in the corner on the biggest fence post down on the right. So after adding some more highlights and shadows and flowers, I'm going to head over to my path and add another bright highlight. So now this will stay there easily because it's all dry. So I can apply this over and not worry about uh, disrupting the layer of paint that's underneath. It's all dry, like I said, so I can come over top now and really bring this up to a nice bright golden highlight. I'm going to add a few more highlights uh, on the grass on either side as well.
I want to make um, the hydrangea planter stand out more in the foreground so I'm making it look softer and blurrier in the background so I'm just scumbling out dry brushing with the leftover paint in my brush. I've scooped up some of my Kelly Green now and I'm just gonna add a little bit of this instead of it being all of that kind of olive um, the olive green color that gold the green gold I want to bring out some of this beautiful uh, clover or Kelly Green so I'm just going to add that and then we're going to start working on our fence. And just before I come in with a fence, and I will be using my little round brush for that, I'm going to add a little bit more color to my flowers and I'm going to add a little bit more um, to the ones that are in the distance off to the right there. I'm also going to come in with another layer or two of some of my sun rays. Now it's definitely optional. It looks pretty just like this. You don't have to, but I know that it's going to dry a little bit darker because I've painted on a black canvas and the black is very dominant. So I want to really brighten up. I'm focusing on the top uh, left corner where the sun rays, the light source of light is really coming from. So I'm going over with titanium white and that's going to just bring that light up even more. So it's going to create more light and that's going to um, accent all the shadows and everything else going on in the painting. It just really um, brings a feeling to the painting when you add a nice source of light like this. So once again, just kind of going over some more of these sun rays down here, and then we're going to come in with a fence. So for the fence, I'm going to be using my round brush again, a bit of water, just black and white, keeping it simple, um, small, really, really small when they're getting farther away. I'm going to give them a slight lean to them that adds character and makes uh, for more of a dramatic perspective instead of having them straight up and down. Now you can see what I'm doing off the bottom of them. I'm just pulling and flicking a little line to create an instant little shadow. Now, as they get further away and how to create perspective with a fence and well, everything else, you're going to make them shorter and shorter and really get closer together. So that's going to give you that sense of uh, distance. And then what I'm going to do is come in with a highlight in the front, um, just using a little bit of white and letting that kind of just naturally blend in with the black to make a gray tone. So you're going to get those mid tones in there naturally and make sure that you're going to make your lines a little bit thicker as they get towards the foreground because things in the foreground closer to us are naturally bigger, right? And they get smaller and faded and closer together in the distance like this little fence. So I want it to kind of feel like it's going over or down and around a corner and I think that just makes it feel a little bit more interesting and and perks your curiosity a little bit and makes you wonder what's down there and makes you kind of want to go on that path and follow it. Just work a little bit more on some subtle little shadows here at the base and then I'm going to add a line right through for uh, the boards that join all the fence posts together. So I'm just going to take my black, mix it with a bit of white and create some the same the same colors and tones as uh, the fence posts and I'll give it a little curve to it, make it look sort of arched so it goes along with that uh, flow and then I'll add a highlight to it, highlight and shadow and then I'll begin working on my little bird. Okay, so as I finish up the little details here on the fence, I'm going to make sure my brush is all clean, take my blues and a little bit of white and just do a simple basic wiggle here that's a little bit round and then goes off into a point for the bird's tail and then just a little head and then a little point for its beak. So no detail. I didn't even add an eye. You don't have to because we're not seeing it very close up so sometimes less is more in a painting and i wanted to just keep this really simple i know a little blue bird's there and i just love having this little uh, suggestion of a bird in this painting um, and i'm going to just keep going over here on these boards with a bit of white until i get that nice sense of uh, bright clean highlight that i want it's really personal and up to you how much you want and you can even use um 
If you wanted to do brown fence posts, you could use burnt sienna. Mix that with a little bit of black and white and you could throw some of that burnt sienna into this. That would look really beautiful in this painting because burnt sienna has a red undertone to it. To it excuse me. <clears throat> and the, the red undertone, of course, is very complementary to all of the green in this painting. So I'm just going to be adding the finishing touches to this painting today. And as always, I want to thank you guys so much for joining me. It's always fun having you join me along in my studio for my tutorials. I love it when you want to paint along with me. And leave a question, comment below. I'm happy to answer. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you all soon in my next video. Take care, everybody. Bye.